Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Blue Abroad Show. I've got Mark and Alex, two of the originals. Boys, we haven't we haven't really done a uh, a chat like this in front of the camera ever. We've had podcasts yeah, together. We have. We've talked from different parts of the world, different states in the country. Uh, what's going on? It's good to be amongst your presence. Oh, it is, Tez, and I mean, you're just in ripping form like you have with your uh, podcast and all your uh, live streamings, putting yourself out there in front of the whole world. I mean, mate, this is what you live and breathe for, and uh, we obviously love it and embrace it, and that's what we're here for. Awesome, mate. Um, let's talk about the upcoming season, shall we? Yes. We want to get a few of our thoughts, a few of our predictions. We'll put our, uh, make our, I guess, our pledge here early in the season, and we can look back on this video and either smile and, and laugh. Or completely regret it. Or completely regret it. <laughs> <laughs> what no, you... these are me, Nick. Nah. Well, okay, well, let's talk about these. Yes. Let's, let's talk about <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> You've wanted to bring them up. Talk to me about what this rattling sound is and, and, and what, what is it coming from? Well, basically, um, over, uh, let's say, 18 months ago, so April 2018 was the uh, birth of an indoor footy team called the Centimetre Perfect. Okay. And uh, even though I'm not captain of the side, I'm one of the leading henchmen that's okay. uh, an experienced old head. Yep. And uh, we've been on a journey. And along the way, I have also been able to help recruit yep. and get some absolute gems into our team. Yep. For a start, it was a bit of fun yep. and just sort of being on the rebuild, just having a bit of a play around with magnets. Yep. And then I thought to myself, well, look, after the first two... I can't, I can't. The first two shadows, with the first two uh, mishaps, it was like enough's enough. So, uh, you know what? We managed to uh, get the first one right here. Awesome. Then, I'm like, how am I going to go back to back? I had my best mate, 10-year reunion at a Panola, which is this year, yep. 10 years out of school. Yep. And that's how we got another one of these. There you go. Which also add on with the uh, All-Australian as well. Offense wins games. But defense wins premierships. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've heard you talk about yourself as the self proclaimed Sam Doherty slash Patrick Cripps, was it? That, you know, he's you know, trying to bring it back to Carlton here. Definitely this more is the a, Sam Doherty side of things. This is a Carlton fan channel after all. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, indoor footy star, you've got another indoor footy star here. Alex, what about you, mate? Talk to me about, talk to me about Carlton this year and. What's happening? What are you What are you noticing in the preseason? Uh, what's some of the language you're looking at? What are some of the you know the little things? Because what we really have now is you know you've got I mean, we do training reports and yeah. whatever the club are giving us and if some of the Herald Sun yeah. writers go out there and give you a report or the Super Coach previews whatever it is. But so from what you're watching, what are you noticing? I'm just noticing the boys look in better shape. Yeah. To be honest, like they look bigger, they look stronger. Yeah. They look a bit more mature now. I think, you know, I think this is where they're ready to yeah. grow up now. Yeah. And start getting some wins, start putting it where it really matters on the field now. Yeah. They, they, I've seen a lot of the footage at training and, you know, the drills that they're doing and things like that. They look really good. Yeah. And I think if T can bring his nice little offensive game along with a strong defensive game. Yeah, yeah. We could be, you know one of the very better teams and one of the more entertaining teams yeah. to watch compared to, you know, the last few couple of years where we've probably been the team that, oh, who cares, it's just Carlton. You know, now we're going to be the team that no one takes for granted anymore. We're going to put a score on the board and we're going to make teams work hard for it. I'm, I'm seeing that in pre-season. They really look, they look in good nick. Yeah. And they just got to keep going, that's all. Yeah, I mean, if there's one thing I've seen, I mean, I've been to every open training session mm. that's been available and if there's one thing I'm noticing, it, it is that they're, yeah. they're starting to move away from being little boys. Yeah. I mean, obviously, probably the second and third year players, you probably put them to the side. But yeah. when you start talking about guys who are entering that fourth season and that fifth season, you know, so we're talking about the likes of, well, Charlie's not training, so we won't talk about him and Harry as well, but um, Jacob Wiedering, Jack Silvani, Cunningham, you know, Cunningham, all those sort of, and boys. then you go to those fourth year players. So we're talking about Sam yeah. Seaton and Zach Fisher. These are guys who I'm noticing, you know, they're 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 not lagging behind in those 400 running drills. Yeah. They're starting to really push up, and then when you see the actual match simulation, you see them in traffic, you see them with the ball in hand. You know, you're right. They're starting yeah. to become. More seasoned. Uh, yeah. What about you, mate? What are you noticing? 
Oh, I mean, again, even with the third year players now, like yeah. you know, with Paddy Dow, you know, hopefully after having the second year blues, you think that the third year is going to be probably a bit more, maybe of his first year, but obviously with a bit more growth and development, and hopefully for his sake can improve more in his uh, kicking efficiency because I feel like someone like him, he's got the explosiveness to obviously break through the packs. Yeah. With Cripps obviously feeding it off to the likes of him, SBS, Fisher, and obviously with still old Murph going around. I just feel for Dow, this could be a bit of a breakout year for him. Yep. But again, we don't want to put too much pressure still on the kid, but I think he knows within himself he's got to make that bit more improvement, especially by foot. Yeah, I think, I mean, for me anyway, I don't know about you guys, like, I don't see there being that big of a rush for him to become, you know, I guess obviously we want these boys that we draft to become elite players and dominate the competition. Yeah. And, you know, I know Sam Walsh has come in and just taken the piss. Um, I think taken the piss is another yeah. at this point. He's <laughs> just like, he's, like yeah. he's, un- he's unreal. <laughs> yeah. But, like, with Paddy Dow, for example, I mean, in seasons past, guys like him have just been thrown into the deep end. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas now we've got a list where... You've got your Gibbons, you've got your Kennedys, you've got your set of fields. You don't have to put these young kids straight in and give them games yeah. early. Like, I think it's going to pay dividends, and, and Bolton talked about yeah. it a lot. Like, you know, this will pay us back. And I think Payne is going to be one of those guys who, you know, 110 games will come up and you'll be like, oh, has he played 110 games? And that's mm. probably because we've played him in those early games, um, you know? That's similar to Nunes, who we just signed. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't even think that he's played... Well, something, what's that, like 150 yeah, he's, something he's games a good something chunk. Like 26 years and you know, of age and you know so, what I mean like yeah. you look at him and you're like did he really play 150 games yeah so like yeah as you were saying I feel like that's what it's going to be like with Dow yeah. and those sort of guys they're just going to play games and yeah well when he went to the up. VFL last year he was dominating yeah he's clearly a level above there at the VFL yeah and so for me it's going to be like well it's fine go to the VFL I don't think you'll start the year in the VFL I really think he'll start it in the ones yeah, uh, I think he will too. for the season opener. But if he does have to go and you know have a spell in the VFL, that's fine because yeah. he's going to be a level above. We'll be playing in a midfield role. You know he's got the class to be better than them and maybe it'll help him with his confidence. Yeah. And then, then he can start working on those decision-making you know, opportunities and the kicking can work on it there. And, and then we go from there. I think what we've been crying out for is the depth in the list yeah. because, I mean, you know, we've had a lot of list cloggers uh, we've done, you know, don't need to talk about how many we, we delisted in that three-year stretch, whatever it was. So, yeah, that's, you know, Paddy's an interesting one. I think... Um, I think I think Dow's game is tailor-made for today's AFL. Oh, yeah. He's got the explosiveness. He can break out of packs. He's actually quite strong in the core. Yeah. And things like that. Just once he gets his disposal and the rest of his game down-packed, he, he could be a breakout star out of nowhere. Yeah. You, you know? mentioned about depth as well. We want the whole entire playing list of Carlton to obviously push and really make it tough for uh, even from the senior players itself you know yeah. to obviously push into that best 22 you know you want to have even guys that are in player 44 45 on the list mm-hmm. to still think that they could play a major part uh, for obviously our future success along the way yeah. yeah yeah who are the breakout candidates for you this year who are the guys that are going to be you know really taking that next step I'll go first. Yeah. I've got a sneaky one. Yeah. Or well, not a sneaky one. Mark knows I love this guy. Yeah. I think Lockie O'Brien is going to come out this hey. year. And I think he is going to show something this season. He he come in in, in his draft year as one of the best kicks, yeah. if not the best kick in it. I think he's going to start showing that now. He's got a great running ability. Yeah. He's strong on the wing. I think he's just going to keep racking up the ball this season. If he can get consistent games... Yeah. Uh, That's what I mean. I'm not sure if he will be in the round one team, but if he can get a string of consistent games on him, yeah, I think we got a a little sneaky Andrew Gaff, a little gem, a little gem on our hands. Imagine that, Andrew Gaff with 28 possessions. I look at I look at O'Brien, and I think he could be that sort of guy, that guy that we get the ball to, and he can bang, slip, hit a target. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's been doing in the match. Yeah, I noticed. Like, you know, when they have their handball passages, yeah. he's always finding a way to be that last one before they kick it inside 50. Well, you look at, well, you look at Gaff, he's a link man. Yeah. That's what I envision O'Brien yeah. to be, a link man. That's the role. So Yeah, he runs hard, kicks long. Yeah. Teague loves that type of game style. Yeah. Um, yep, I like it. What about you? A breakout well, candidate. I'm definitely going to say Bam Bam, Matt Kennedy. Ooh, now, I mean, it. with love him... It. 
Obviously, he was, let's say, more the second-hand man to try and obviously support Cripps in yeah. the midfield because we kept talking about trying to have that other big body midfielder to help him out. But I really feel that even, um, you know, when we obviously started winning games, he was able to kick multiple goals a game. Now, you'd like to think that, you know, in time where you want to have Kennedy probably more into the midfield mm-hmm. and then you can throw Cripps down there as well. So then, obviously, the pressure's off him. Yeah. Trying to always feed it out to, obviously, our outside running mids and... And especially for Cripps, I know we know he's going to go always from strength to strength, but yep. for him, the breakout for him obviously is to average a goal a game. Yep. Yeah. Or hopefully one and a half. And that will obviously involve, you know, with guys like Bam Bam, why he's going to improve because not only he's going to chip in, I reckon, with goals, but again, probably more of the ball, yep. but also try and obviously, you know, relieve a little bit of pressure for Paddy to obviously go deep, sort Have of like Dusty. Forward. Exactly. I mean, yeah. you look at Dusty, he's been able to kick. Six goals in multiple games. Yeah. I feel, and you look at the game against Brisbane where Cripps kicked four in the second half. Yeah. He, he actually outscored Brisbane itself yeah, yeah. in Teague's first game as coach. Why can't he, you know, start having games where three and four is not only the norm, but he could get a five and six? The guy's a monster. Yeah, he can. I, I think naturally, I've always been interested in this. Like we talk about Paddy Cripps, and you know, naturally we just want them to become the perfect footballer. So, I mean, he's the best contested. Midfielder, I think, in the game. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I know if, if, I am biased. I am so biased. If everyone's going to say each their own, but yeah, you know what? I, I, he, he is. Yeah. You can't. You think in the modern game of football, any other fan would be crazy to not think. If you think contested ball winner, best contested player, who, if they're insane, if they're not thinking that Cripps, the law, that Cripps is the first player yeah. that comes to mind. So, so for me, I guess it would be great if we could put him forward and if he can mm. become this ultra amazing midfield forward type player. Yeah. Um, are we getting a little bit to... There is an argument to be made, well, what does he do best? He's a clearance specialist. That's what he absolutely does best. Why do we have to you know, put the pressure on him now to go forward and kick 30 goals or 22 goals, you know, 23 goals, whatever it is, plus be that midfield freak? This is, what, this this is, is, this is what I don't understand as yeah. well. He's got he he's got his role. He knows what he's strong at. Yeah. He knows what he does best, and yeah. he does it better than anyone in the league. Yeah. I think what, we don't need him. Yeah, Mind as, tr- as much as it's handy, it'd yeah. be really handy if he could go down and kick two yeah. goals a game. But it, it's just I don't think that's one of his strengths. It's yeah. it's never really been yeah. that main thing. He's had flashes of it, yeah. but it's never really been his main thing. Yeah. He's, he's a clearing specialist, as you said. So I mean, I get the merit. I get yeah. it. Like. Let's prolong his career, kind of thing. You know, he yeah. can't play this crash and bash off for so long, and you know what? Well, you know the arguments. You know, yeah. it's going to have a, a toll on his body and, and all of that. Definitely. And so I get, I get it. Like let him play forward; he can rest there and have patches and, and all of that. Um, I'm just also mindful of the other end of the conversation. Like, why should we try and push him away from something that he's so great at for the sake of something that he's going to have to develop? Yeah, exactly. You know, um, it's like. You already have the perfect midfielder. Yeah. Why, you know, why move him forward? But anyway, like you said, it's only going to be in patches. It doesn't need to be a, a full-time forward. It's just more... Oh, of course. You know. I mean, you look at all the other great midfielders as well. Why they've obviously elevated their game is because they've been able to at least obviously hit the scoreboard. And I guess with him, that's where he can obviously, you know, really get more attention from not just the umpires, but obviously even from the rest of our club that the guy can, as you said, do so much defensively with his tackling, obviously winning the ball out of the middle, obviously breaking away in clearances, but him putting the scoreboard, you know, for the team yeah. would just obviously become the complete package. And mate, come in, the, come in, the, come in here a little bit, speed over a bit. There you go. Oh, yeah, <laughs> make, it, make it too much noise. The medals, <laughs> mate. Um, but in saying that, like again, being versatile these days is obviously um, the reason why, you know. <laughs> Most guys don't just play in one position no more. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I've got real belief that, for Paddy's sake, you know, yes, you leave him in there where he's obviously succeeded. Yeah. But there's no reason why he can just flutter out yep. up for when we need to. Yeah. And that's why, um, as I said earlier, Bam yep. Bam to obviously improve a lot more. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to go with, oh, this is almost an easy pick now, because like, it's, the, it's the safe option, but Jacob Wietering... Mm. I have seen man mountains mm. before. Like I remember when I used to, I remember when the Lions played against Carlton at Icon Park, which was still, which was busy at the time, which was when Favola yeah. left for Brisbane and they had a practice match down at um, at Vizzy Park. And I remember seeing Jonathan Brown in the flesh. And I remember looking at him and being like, 
Oh my God, he is, he's just thick and huge. And Jacob Wiedering, if you, have you seen his legs in, in like, have you oh, been, yeah. like, he is oh, yeah. so, he's just massive. The he, thigh muscles when he kicks, like, it's just incredible. Yeah. Um, the shoulders in particular. Oh my goodness. I think he's, gr- I think the upper body has grown because he always had the thick legs, yeah. the strong, thick legs, and he had the core strength and that's probably what helped him with that intercept play. Yeah. Um, but I think what's happened now is he's, he's built that upper body. He's had the trials and tribulations. He's gone through the ups. He's gone through the downs, the struggles, the the random injuries he was copying. And I think it's all going to start coming together. And we're talking about year five now for a key position defender. That's really when it. Um, <laughs> would I be? Would that's I, really when it starts coming to fruition. Would I be crazy on making a big call that he'll push for Australian this year? Not at all, mate. I think that's the type of year he's going to have. I really, I really do. Mm. Also, because he started... Because Jones was out for a good chunk of yeah. last year, remember? He oh, yes, with concussion. concussion against North Melbourne, correct. So what happened was Jacob started playing on these number one forwards. Yeah. Yeah. And if you remember, he was doing really well. Like, we yeah. got smashed by Geelong in round 23. Tom Hawkins was goalless. This was in Geelong. Of course, yeah. absolutely. You know, uh, he, he did a really good job on, on Tom Lynch... Did a really good job on, on Taylor Walker, who kicked, I think it was two goals in the first quarter, but then he was goalless for the game after that, I think it was. Um, so he's, he's had the experience. And I always find that when you have a breakout year, you've got to show a little something the year before. Yeah. I think he's definitely done that. Yeah. So that's my big pick yeah. for the breakout contender of the year. Uh, that's a really, really good call. Yeah. yeah. Best and fairest. Is it, is it still... The Crips show. Yeah. Because you've got to remember, but with the game to go in the 2019 season, with one round left, he was one vote behind or ahead. There was only one vote between him and Ed Kerno. So is the gap closing? Well, the good thing is, the good thing is for us, we want it to close. Yes. We yes. don't want it to be just Crips stand out every single season. The rest is, you know, 50 votes behind. Yeah. You yeah. know, like it's good that. Everyone's starting to push up to him now. Yeah. And, you know, I guess that's the effect he's having on captain now. Yeah. Bringing everyone along with him. Yeah. I think Sam Walsh is going to be the big mover. I think he could really push on, if not, you know, maybe actually beat him. Yeah. You know? That's you imagine of, if we've got like a Chris Judd. That's the sort of player he is. You imagine we've got like a, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like a, a second year yeah. jet. Chris yeah. Judd reborn 2.0, but imagine? in Sammy Walsh's uh, oh. physique and body. I mean, the mind can wonder, can't mm. it? It can. Like the possibilities <laughs> can be created in the mind, can't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think I think we'd be crazy not to say it's going to be Crips again, because, yeah. I, I, you know, he's arguably the best player in the competition. All right. So, so who is... Okay, so there it is. So who is going to be... That player that does win the best and fairest when it's not Crips. Do we, Walsh. I think I'm, it's Walsh? I'm, I think it's Walsh. Yeah. What if Jacob Wittering does become all Australian? You know? He'd make a... He, uh, he, it's probably yeah. in then. Because if, Sam Doherty's... Yeah. I know he's coming off the knee and... The knees, I should say. Mm, um, twice. But, I mean, if he was to come back and have a fantastic season, I feel like the gravity of the vote would fall in his favour because yeah. of... What he's had to overcome yeah. and, and all of that. Yeah. Um, speaking of, we've got a knee reconstruction specialist here. Oh, You've had a few. Don't, don't remind me, man. Yeah. Three of them as had well. Three. Talk to me, just from your experience, because mm. you know you played a pretty high level of basketball. Mm. Talk to me about um, after this, I guess the second one. Did you play much after the second one? I played about nine, ten games okay. in the season. And then um, I went for, went for a turn. Yeah. And it just happened again. Yeah. But at the same time, like I, I wasn't doing anywhere near uh, the true. rehab okay. and the strengthening and those, you know, yep. the, all that sort of stuff that obviously Docket is getting to do now. When so, you were playing, did you lose the mental side of it? Like, did you lose the fear of doing it again? I think it took, you know, it's look for Doc speaking from experience and I can guarantee Doc will probably go through the same. That first game or two, yep. there's going to be slight worries there probably yeah. mentally because he's probably going to think, you know, going back with the fly of the ball like what he does. There's always going to be that little thing in the back of your mind like, I've done this, I've it done that. It could happen again. But I think, you know, as the game goes on though, yeah, he'll push he'll push through it and he, yeah. he won't even think about it. It's This is where he'll... And, you know, doing all this training now, the match sim sort of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I was listening to, you know, My Blue Heaven with Heath Buck yeah. as well. And he was saying that, um, you know, he's going back with the flight of the ball and all that sort of stuff. And I'm like, if he's doing that at training now, I mean, come game time, he'll he'll already be in that mindset. He knows he can do it. And yeah. I think he'll be he'll be all good. 
Well, there was a moment at training where he did that vintage mm. Doherty go back with the flight of the ball market and everyone was sitting next to him yeah. back at the time and we looked at each other and we were just like, nah, like, so I think it's going to be one of those we're, we're hearty gonna, mouth yeah. type situations. We're, we're going to we're gonna be like that all year potentially, like probably all year, especially those first month or two though. Yeah. We're really going to be yeah. heart and mouth every single time he goes near the ball. Yeah. But, but for him, once he does it once or twice... And lands and all good, yeah, and I think then he's just off and running. Yeah, it, 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 it you'd be surprised what it does. It, it has a big mental mental thing. If you yeah. do one thing and you know, oh yeah, my knee's fine, you just keep going and you're ready to do the next thing. Yeah. So that's just speaking from my experience, and you know, well, it's unfortunate because like the way that I did it, I was doing a euro step, so it was that quick turn, yes. and I'd done that move, you know, when I was in my rehab and things like that. I'd done that so many times, so I felt so comfortable with it. So it was weird. just. Just, just unlucky. It's yeah. just what it was. So yeah, here's what it is. How many wins? Ten plus. Got to be. Yeah. Love it. Needs to be. Simple as that. We're yeah. a team that demands success, and it has to be improvement. Oh, that's, no, the, yeah. that's the Carlton culture. This is where we got to grow up. Absolutely. Yeah, it's time to grow up. Yeah. I mean, 2013 was the last time we won over 10 plus games, and I've really feel that you know if we can jumpstart Richmond in um, the first game of the season, then I can't see why we, you know... That's a big Push point. for finals. Richmond's a tough one. Oh, Richmond. Richmond's a tough Rich, one. Richmond are a juggernaut. They're unveiling the flag, you know, round one. Maybe we can pinch them. They've got a bit of a premiership hangover. But I just... Yeah. You're right, though. If we can get... If we can pinch... We've got Richmond... Western Dogs, Bulldogs. Essendon, Essendon. Which is our only... Sorry, our second Thursday and... Only other um, Thursday night game. Yeah. So, really kick, kick and then we've got so, Sydney, I feel, in round four. Yeah. That's over there. Yeah. yeah. If we can be, if we can be two and two, mm. if we, just yeah. start, just don't like, uh, where are we? We're Owen. Well, we don't need to be Owen four. Oh, That's yeah. what we don't need to be. Oh, my God. It'll, it'll, every it'll, it'll, fucking year, seriously. <laughs> every there freaking year, we're always Owen three, <laughs> Owen four. It's not freaking Owen Wilson show. Yeah, it's true. We'd be on the ups. We'd like to, you know, we'd like to be freaking four and oh two. Yeah. No, yeah. it's true. We've got to, like, you know, whether we make finals or not, I don't know. But it Probably can't sure. be in a situation where it's round eight and there's just like mathematically no way we can make finals. There's got to be I some hope. There can't be. You know, we can't be at round eight only win one game. No, nah. that's just what it is. No, nah. we, we have to be at least four and four, or heaps better. Yeah, by we've, that we've point. got to try and stay at five hundred. Yeah. At, at yeah. Uh, you know, a fifty percent winning record for as mm-hmm. much as we can. We're probably going to lose more games than what we win for yeah. the season. And that's okay, but it can't be... But I feel like it could only be one or two games lost more than actual wins. Mm, yeah, imagine. Yeah, I think you know so what I mean? Well, so, you know, imagine. You know, that if, if we... Yeah, as you said, if we can say that 50%, yeah. we're, we're, on, we're on track to make finals and that's what it is. Yeah. Healthy percentage would be a very key as well, considering... It's just all going to be very dependent on our health. Yeah. Like, you look at Richmond, the two years they've won the Premiership, okay, they might have had a few injuries early on in 2019, but then you see by the end of the season, they yeah. were just, everyone was healthy, everyone was all good. Um, we just haven't been able to string string together some luck on the injury front. Yep. Fingers crossed, th- this is the year where everyone can maintain health and fitness, we can get everyone on the field, our best team on the field every single week, yep. and I think that's when we'll really you know, push in and don't have to rely too much on depth just always coming into it. Yep. So, what is the news with uh, Mark Murphy? Of course, we noticed that he recently uh, had done his ankle, but uh, we just wanted to know if you had any uh, update in uh, the news with him. I mean, yeah, he went down. Club have said it's just going to be a one to two week uh, injury in terms of being on a modified program. So, Mm. I don't know. I just. Do you remember last time we did his ankle? I heard that before. Yeah, the the, the two two week ankle. And then it turned out to be, what, two months? Yeah, I think it was like. I feel like it was like 10 weeks. Yeah. I remember it was, yeah. So I'm yeah. a little bit, I think it was a bit of damage control. Mm. Maybe because it was like, it was the an open was session yeah. um, and a lot of people saw it happen and they just yeah. want to get everyone just to settle down a little bit. I don't know. Like I saw it happen. He just sort of fell down. No one was near him. I thought it was an Achilles. Well, no, you, normally that's what you'd think. Yeah. Like no contact. No contact. No, no, anything. no one near him. That it's, it's, it'd be strange if it was just an ankle, no one around yeah. him. That's why I'm like... Unless still, there was like a ditch in the yeah. ground. You know, and, and if that's, that's the case, then... 
Well, let's take well, well, let's talk about that for a second. Here. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, because, I mean, I remember, well, you speak of him being the king of the ACLs. I oh. remember I had done my ankle twice in six months from 2018. Yeah. And then, uh, lucky enough, it's been pretty healthy uh, since. But, uh, no, I remember the same thing. There was no contact. I did a bit of a pivot turn yep. whilst I uh, trying to regain possession yep. in indoor footy. And then I just buckled down like a sack of potatoes. Thought I got shot <laughs> in the leg in the, in the uh, front yard. And then I was like, oh, not again, not again. And then this was back in season one that cost us one of our flags. But then, uh, obviously, as you can see right here, there's still a lot more to come. And don't worry, the ankle is very, very healthy. It's more stronger than ever. So, um, But, yeah, we've obviously gone through adversity. Um, obviously, ACL is a lot worse. But even ankles, they could still be uh, annoying at the same time. But, yeah, I think to, to the serious point, healthy list, and this is with obviously any club, no matter who you are, but, of course, for our sake at Carlton, healthy list gives us an opportunity to obviously, you know, really go after those, you know, contending premiership sides and hopefully, you know, we can start bridging the gap, you know, instead of having to get slaughtered by the top sides, um, you know, we really try and obviously push the gap. Although the funny thing is with Richmond, even though they've now been us the last nine times when we used to, you know, make them our buddies, they don't smash us though. They've yeah. never really smashed us. Obviously, they had, that, we they had did. that one game where they beat us by 43, I think it was. When, well, they went on to win and, the premiership yeah, that Yeah, that was year. in 2017, but... I don't really call other, that a thrash. But other than, other than that though, it's only really been like 20 points. You know, 25 yeah. points. It's we always seem... We find a way... The last few times we've played them, especially in that round we one game, they this, jump us. Yeah. And then we just leave it too late. It's like yeah. If we can just not get down by 37 points like we did the last few years. <laughs> well, look, you know? look at 2018 when we kicked the first, what? Five. Five, five, five oh, goals of the game. Oh, mate. If we if, can start like that. If we could start, That's right. Charlie Kuno. Yeah. Oh, if, if we could start like that, I right. really feel like we could... We are, as a club... A, like a giant that's just waiting to be awakened. Yeah. Like oh, big time, mate. Can you just imagine? That I'm going to be the worst person to be. If you're not a Carlton supporter, <laughs> like you just don't want to be around me. Like I, the, the lid. That moment when we, that moment when we finally break, uh, break the shackles and win a premiership. Oh Madonna! I'm telling you now, Ligon Street Life's is going to hard. be the <laughs> biggest party <laughs> I've hard. ever seen. <laughs> Could be the end of everything. It uh, could be life complete. Yeah. Carl, like Carlton winning. I, I was, I was, you know, at the, um, at the Imperial watching the grand final mm. 2019. Ah, yeah. And I went past the MCG afterwards and I, I actually had never been there around Melbourne when it was, when it was happening. But I remember seeing Richmond, um, you know, celebrating and the fans on Swan Street. Just amazing. So anyway, with that, boys, thank you very much for your time. Uh, always a pleasure right. to have you on and go the mighty blue boys go the blue boys we're go the mighty blue boys we're coming in 2020 and a three piece coming as well just look at all the gold it's what Carlton's going to be achieving soon thanks mate